Uh, hi, my name is Kyle. Thank you for the introduction. And I'm going to present a voxel based representation for improved future appearance. Uh, I'm a PhD student at the University of Montreal, and I've been working with Pierre Poulin and Veron Katahib. So the complexity, uh, yeah, looks great. So the complexity of a scene in computer graphics application has been increasing over the years. Just to give an idea, a car from Gran Turismo uh, had 300 polygons in his first version, and I'll have 500,000 in the current one. But not only that, um, but the quality of rendering has been increasing. So to render high quality in like this one in the image would be quite challenging due to rendering time and memory consumption. <coughs> so in any scene, as objects are far away, fewer details uh, are visible. However, finding uh, rendering these objects, ev even if they are really far, is still quite challenging in both rasterization and retracing. In rasterization, you need to visit all the polygons to render such ob objects. And in ray tracing, uh, you need to properly cover the pixel in order to get the correct final color. So if you do an undersampling, details like um, the building antennas in the image or could disappear, and alias improves to be a major issue. However, sampling more rays per pixel might jeopardize the rendering performance. So finding ways to improve the performance and memory consumption are needed. And a common way of doing that is to, it's to apply level of details. As the objects are far away, loading every asset is not uh, fully necessary, and some form of simplification and approximation can be um, used to render these objects. So although LOD is a common concept in the CG industry, it's not fully solved. For instance, Burley mentioned in his paper about the Hyper Render that if any artifact would appear in the image, they would ask, oh, did you try to disable the LOD? And then eventually the feature that they have was uh, removed. So one way of performing LOD is to do mass simplification, as to reduce the number of um, primitives that will be rendered. However, this approach suffers from appearance loss. As you can see in the image, the diffuse and the specular shading uh, does not fully appear uh, after a few simplifications. And <coughs> sorry, in a scene like this one of the tree, after a few simplifications, the small leaves um, you disappear causing occlusion miscalculation. And also, mass simplification has issue with excessive noise and ultimately could rely on manual intervention, adding some extra work to the artist. So another solution is to approximate the scene to a volumetric representation. A voxelized representation presents a natural Yarko model and has a fixed cost per voxel. However, um, presenting one approximation that can handle both volumetric and surface-like appearance, like the one in the image, you have the trunk of the trees as a surface-like, and the leaves as a more volumetric appearance. That could be quite challenging to handle. So <coughs> over the years, several uh, volumetric approximations have been introduced. So back in 1998, Nehre introduced a volumetric representation that fits the um, distribution of normals into an ellipsoid. And more recently, building the same idea of using an ellipsoid, Heights and colleagues presented SDGX, a microflexal representation to approximate the distribution of normals. And to render both surface-like and volumetric appearance, uh, Lubé and Nere, uh, identified the surface-like parts of the scene, like the tree, and they will find the trunk and render as the original polygon, and the volumetric part will be rendered as voxel. So in order to use only voxels for both surface-like and uh, volumetric appearance, Vicin and colleagues um, introduced a new transmittance model that can and transit between linear transmittance and exponential transmittance. And they both use SDGX to approximate the distribution of normal. And more recently, Baco and colleagues and VIA and colleagues use neural network to learn the appearance and visibility of a voxel and also to perform data compression. While providing nice results, they surface for long pre-computation uh, at the learning phases. So now for the rest of the presentation, I only mentioned the first name of the author to reference them. So being from previous work, we want to pay particular attention to the directional distribution of normals, colors, and visibility. And we only use we only use local volumetric data to build our representation, and we only use uh, volumetric information. We want to handle both large and small occluders without any artist intervention. So to achieve these goals, we propose a virtual mesh that encodes colors and normals in its faces and vertex. And that we approximate the appearance of the voxel. We also propose a low resolution subgrid to encode opacities to approximate both surface-like and volumetric appearance. 
And finally, we rely on simple but efficient random methods to sample the virtual mesh and compute the opacity from a voxel from a given viewpoint. So to build our presentation, I'll give a brief overview. We have the input scene, then we voxelize that scene, and for each voxel, we sample rays from outside to get the normals and the color of the hits, and we, we keep the occlusion as one if it hits an object. If it doesn't, we just keep the occlusion for as zero. Finally, get all the normals to create the oriented virtual mesh, which will store the distribution of normals and colors, and the subgrid of occlusions will be created to approximate the occlusion due to the voxel. Now I'm going to add each, each step individually. So the first one is the vox sampling. Uh, we want to unbias a sampling of its content. And to achieve that, given a voxel with an object inside, uh, we sample point P and the sphere that surround that voxel with direction D towards the center. Then we project the voxel into the plane defined by P and D. And we randomly shift P to P dash, keeping the direction D. We shoot a ray from that position direction. If it hits, we, sent the, we set the occlusion to 1 and we keep the normal and color of that hit. Otherwise, we just set the occlusion to zero. So from all, all gathered voxels, we build the virtual mesh that approximate the distribution of normals and colors. And the virtual mesh is the octahedron, triangular shape that store up to three voxels and one color per face. And note that the virtual mesh does not approximate the actual mesh that is within the voxel, but um, approximate the, the <coughs> sorry, the appearance of the voxel. So given a voxel like this one in the image, you have a blue and a green object. In the end, after the, the first step, and all the data are gathered, and we have a set of normals, and the color relate to each normal. After that, to build the virtual mesh shape, we estimate the ellipsoid that best fit the distribution of normals using the SDG estimation method, and we approximate the ellipsoid shape using octahedron as a triangular mesh. Um, so the Octahedron faces divide the space into eight octants, and each gather voxel is assigned to one of the octants. That gives a distribution of normal per face. And for distribution that has more than three normals, we compute the cone that best fits each distribution. And we assign the color of each face as the average color of the samples that are in each face. In the end, we start three extremal normals for the cone of a face, and we compute the and compute and store the average color of each face. Note that the face of the octahedron may not con contain any distribution, like the one in the image, and we handle a spatial case between zero and three normals and colors. Now that we have the shape of the virtual mesh, we need to sample, so doing rendering, uh, given a view plane and with a view direction of V, we project the octa octahedron uh, to the view plane, and we randomly pick a point in the projection and create the corresponding ray. Then the rate section with the virtual mesh gives a normal from a barycentric interpolation and a color that is the color of the face. We typically shoot 160 rays and shade the voxel accordingly. So now, regarding the occlusion, we take inspiration from a previous work on Vicini, who sampled the neighboring voxels to get a correlation between voxels. Uh, however, this approach is hard to generalize. So we apply the same concept, but instead of looking to the neighboring voxel, we look to the information within the voxel. So given one voxel with a few objects inside, we subdivide it into a low resolution subgrid of three by three by three. And then we populate, to populate the subgrid, we compute the intersection of the sampled rays uh, from previous step, and we add the opacity values of each subgrid traversed by array. After retracing all the rays and compute all the intersections, we compute the average opacity for only non-empty subgrid elements, the one in cyan. And for empty subgrid elements, we have a zero opacity. So now to compute um, the occlusion in real time, uh, so we have a voxel with a 3x3x3 three by three by three subgrid elements. And then we define the square window that bounds the parallel projection of the voxel and divide it to a 4x4 four four pixel. Then we replace each subgrid element by an enclosed sphere, and each pixel of the window is approximated by its inscribed in sphere. So we project each sphere to compute the occlusion contribution um, and the opacity of the subgrid elements multiplied by the coverage area. We only keep the largest uh, contribution for each pixel, and in the end, we compute the average of the pixels to get the final occlusion. So our representation requires 143 memory 
bytes of memory per voxel. Our virtual mesh, we have three eigenvectors and three scaling factors in order to reconstruct uh, the virtual mesh, and three normals, one color, and one boolean per face. Um, and that boolean is to <coughs> encode if the face has a distribution of normals or just uh, a fixed set. And for the subgrid of occlusion, we store one value per subgrid element, giving a total of 27. So we ran our testing on an i7 with 32 gigs of memory and a NVIDIA RTX 2080 uh, GPU. And our scene varies for 100,000 to 3 million triangles, approximately. And the pre-computation took on average 22 seconds at 128 cubic resolution and 101 seconds at 256 cubic resolution. And we rendered the scenes at resolution fit one voxel per pixel. And on average, rendering achieves 59 frames per second at 128 and 27 frames per second at 256. So we compare our representation with the average of color, normals, and opacity, and occlusion, sorry, and when with Vicini's approximation. However, we only use local information for each approach, which is different than the improved method of Vicini. The reference image is rendered with 1,024 uh, rays per pixel. So our presentation can reproduce different appearance. You have the buildings and the street as large occluders, and the trees and the antennas of the buildings as a volumetric appearance. Uh, and the other approach have difficulties to reproduce surface-like appearance, as can be seen in the holes in the buildings and the streets. So in this scene, you have the island, and the tree trunks has a more large occluder appearance, and the leaves and of the tree are more volumetric occluders. So given a closer look, we can see that our representation reproduces uh, the island as a large occluder, as others might fail in that. As you can see in, in both Everett and Vicini, you see some blue that is behind the island from the, the sea that is behind that should not be visible. Also, we can better reproduce the trunk appearance. Meanwhile, other methods produce discontinuity in the images. So here, the light source is behind the object. Our representation can reproduce the correct shading, uh, as most of the visible bun is not visible to the light source, given the dark appearance. And the approach from Vicini fails to reproduce such shading um, because the object is not fully opaque and the white background leaks through the bunny. And even if we set <coughs> the occlusion to be uh, full occlusion, uh, so we still have problems. So for our presentation, for objects like the bunny that the normals are one-sided, our virtual mesh will fit the normals into a few faces without any symmetry. Meanwhile, SDGX distribution has a symmetrical shape, which creates a set of normals that are not part from the original uh, distribution, generating the, the normals that are light in red. And that can lead to incorrect shading, as can we see in the red um, highlights. So our presentation can reproduce diffuse and specular shadings, uh, although SDGX is also able to reproduce both shadings. However, the leaky of opacity, uh, or by the method of Vicini, reduced the shading quality. And quantitatively, our method produces smaller errors and large SSIM compared to previous work in both 128 and 256 resolution. However, in some cases, due to the extended occlusion factor, it may be less accurate. So here, the average methods produce uh, a higher error all over the place in the scene. 